you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, Mr. T. I'm back on our unit on exponential functions, and here we're going to be talking in part two about what are called exponential growth and decay models. We'll be solve, using exponential functions to solve real-world problems. So let's get started. Now we have two kinds of exponential functions, growth and decay. If you remember from the graphs, when the B value was bigger than 1, we had exponential growth. Remember, going from left to right, we were approaching 0 and getting steep. And when we set the B value to be a fraction, like 1 half, you remember it started high and decreased. That would be referred to as exponential decay. And every time the value of x, which is the exponent, is increasing by 1, we are multiplying the previous value by B. So when we look at real world problems, any problem where we have a repeated multiplication, then the appropriate um, model to use would be an exponential model. And this happens quite frequently. We'll talk about some examples that you'll be able to relate to. So some typical exam examples for exponential growth. Prime example would be inflation. Cost of things over time uh, increase. So healthcare costs increase by a certain amount each year. Education costs, in particular college education, is increasing each year. The price of things you buy, maybe groceries for your parents and things, all those things increase. And over time, there's an average percentage increase each year. Now, in real reality, each year the exact percentage may vary, but over time when we're trying to model or predict things, we can use an average inflation cost. Once you get out of school and get a job, hopefully you're, as you get experience and things, your wages, your salary will go up each year. Uh, we could model and predict your future salary by looking at how many, what raise you think you might get on an average each year. Once you start getting money and start uh, saving you in investments, if you want to predict how much money you might have for your retirement uh, investments, they increase by a percentage each year. If you put in the bank, you get interest. And in science and biology, uh, we study the growth of cells, things like bacteria and other viruses. They grow by the cell splitting, so they are growing by doubling the number of cells over a certain period of time. So again, that is a exponential growth application. Some things decrease in value. So for example, if you know about buying cars, if you buy a new car, every, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it starts decreasing in value. And it decreases by roughly a fixed percent each year. That's called depreciation. And some of you have heard about carbon-14 dating. That's a way of dating archaeological artifacts by measuring a particular kind of carbon, which is a radioactive carbon. Those of you that have been in science probably understand what we mean by the word radioactive. But uh, they break down into non-radioactive versions of this, and that follows, again, an exponential model. So let's look at some of these examples. Now, when we are modeling an example, we're going to be writing an equation using this model. So to fill in this equation, we need to figure out a couple things. We need to figure out the value of A. Well, if you remember from our graph, A is the initial value or the uh, y-intercept. B will be a growth or decay factor, and we'll determine those by looking at the words in the problem. Remember, it's a repeated multiplying. So if something like cell division, the number of cells doubles every, in a certain amount of time, then B is going to be 2. When we're talking about radioactivity, we talk about a half-life. So the amount of radioactive material decreases by half over a certain period of time. So in those models, B will be 0.5. Frequently, we use percentages, like uh, the price, prices might increase by 5% per year, or maybe 
your investments are giving you a return or an interest of 5% per year. Now here it may not be so obvious what we're trying to do is a multiplier. So if something is increasing oops, that's a G, by 5%, if we were, let's say we had $100 and we're trying to increase it by 5%, well we would take 0.05 times, which is 5% times 100 and we would get $5. But we don't have $5, we now have the original amount which was 100 plus 5 or we have 105. So we have 100% plus 5%. Well, 100% in decimals is 1.0, and 5% is 0 0.05. If we add those together, we get 1.05. So if we take 100 and multiply it by 1.05, we get 105. So 1.05 is our uh, growth factor when we have a 5% increase. For percent decreases, we're doing, say, 100% minus 20%, and we get... 80% uh, which would be, forget that point there, 80% which would be 0.8. So when we are doing, uh, let me clean this up a little bit here, when we are doing uh, percent increases and decreases to find the B value, we are going to, for percent increase, B will equal 1 plus, and I'm going to use the letter R here, where R is the percentage in decimal. So when we do a 5% increase, it's 1 plus 0 0.05. And for percent decreases, this will be where you tend to make your mistakes, it's 1 minus the percent. So a 20% decrease would be 1 minus 0 0.2, which would be 0 0.8. Again, these R's are the percent written as a decimal. Okay, so now we understand our model. Let's apply it. So here's our first example. We've got a bacteria that's growing, say, in a petri dish with an appropriate medium. And we know that this particular kind of bacteria doubles every six hours. So the word doubles here tells me that my B value will be uh, 2. And we have initially 100 bacteria, so A is 100. And we are going to, X to get this number is going to be how many times it has doubled. So two days is the same as 48 hours. And we double every six hours, so if I divide by six, I get uh, eight times, it doubled eight times. So that's going to be the x value I'm going to use. So if I want to calculate the answer here, y is going to be 100 times 2 to the 8th power, which is, let's bring a calculator in here. So we've got 100 times 2 to the 8th power. And we've got 25,600 bacteria cells. So that's in two days. So we can see it grew quite rapidly. If we wanted to write a model for this with every six hours, if we want to let t be the number of hours, remember we divided the number of hours by six. So we, our general model here could be y equals 100. I'm going to use parentheses this time, times 2 to the t divided by 6. So we could use this formula to compute the number of bacteria after uh, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, any number of hours we could put in here. It doesn't even have to be evenly divisible by 6. We can still predict our thing. So let's look at a, another example. Let me move the calculator off here a little bit. Okay, something that's going to be important to you and your families coming up soon is going to be the cost of college education. And this current year at Rowan University here in New Jersey, 
uh, the cost of education. Now this includes tuition, your uh, dormitory and meal plan and books is about 25000 per year. That's if you're a New Jersey resident. If you're an out-of-state resident, it's even more expensive. Well, one issue with college education is over the past 15 or 20 years, the cost of education on average has been about 7%. And actually right now it's a little bit less than that because our inflation is so low, but it's running at a much higher percentage than people's salaries are going. So let's look at not only what's going to happen for you for your college education. This is a big amount. Remember, you've got to do four years, so we're talking over $100,000 for your college education. But what's going to happen in maybe 25 years when maybe you're starting to possibly help your children go to college? Let's look at what that's going to be. So for this model, we've got a percent increase, so B we have a 7% increase per year, so remember B is going to be 1 plus 0 0.07, which is going to be 1.07. And our value as of today, we'll let that be time equals 0, is 25,000. That's our initial amount. And for our problem, we're going to let time or X be 25. So to calculate our cost of a year of college 25 years from now, or at least to estimate what that might be, is we're going to be plugging into our uh, exponential model here. So let's bring out a calculator to compute that. So now we've got 25,000, that's today's cost, times 1.07 raised to the 25th power. And we get about a hundred and almost one hundred and thirty six thousand dollars. This is the exact amount here, so it's about a hundred and thirty six thousand dollars, and that's for one year of college education. So if we multiply that times four, we're talking about our college education going up from a hundred thousand to well over a half a million dollars. So it's up more than five times. Now the problem is going to be is our salaries will not be increasing by that much. So for every year, our gap between what we earn and what it's costing for education is going up. So it's a real dilemma for this uh, country. Uh, this, you know, something's going to have to happen. If this happens, no one's going to be able to afford to go to college. But then our jobs that we have require a higher uh, skilled labor. So you know, we've got a real issue coming up in the country. And let's look at our final example here. Let's look at an exponential decay uh, problem. The last two were exponential growth. Some of you may know about cars. So let's, we, in our example here, we've got a car that initial price is 25000 And we want to know what that car is going to be worth, let's say, if we were going to sell it in five years. Well, cars depreciate in value. and Depending on the model of the car, they depreciate at varying rates. You can research that on sites like Edmunds.com. But on average, cars you know, depreciate somewhere between 10 or 11 percent to maybe 25 percent per year. So for this example, the model of car we're buying has a historical average of depreciating 18 percent per year. So let's look at our model here. So our initial price is our a value, so that's what we paid for the car. X is going to be time in years since we purchased the car, so how long we've owed the car. And this time we have a decay factor, so our B is 1 minus 18% in decimal, which would be 0.82. So to calculate our value in five years, we need to calculate this computation. And let's look at that. So let's clear this out again. So we've got 25,000 times 0.82 raised to the fifth power. And we see after five years, our car is only worth $9,268 and say 50 cents. Quite a steep decline. Let's just graph that. So let's look at here this model, so we're just going to put the, let X be the number of years, so we're going to put our model here, 25,000 
times 0.82 raised to the x power. And this time we're going to have to set a window, so we're only interested in positive years. We'll go out 10 years. And our y values, uh, the car is not going to have a negative value, and the maximum value will be the initial amount. So let's scale our uh, y axis at a thousand dollars. Each tick mark on the y axis will be a thousand dollars. And let's look at that. So these are years, and this is the value. You can see during the first three or four years of a new car, the uh, price value decreases quite rapidly. If we went out to say look at some older cars, so let's change our window to go out maybe 20 years. Now most people aren't going to keep a car 20 years, but these days we keep them more than 10 years. Now the significance of knowing this graph is if we buy a used car, maybe three or four years old, now we're starting here and this depreciation is not so bad. You know, we're still losing value on our car, but not so bad. So from an economic point of view, buying new cars, it doesn't really make sense because of this steep depreciation value here. But, you know, a lot of us like new cars. We want the latest technology or we want it to be clean and reliable. So it's a trade-off you'll have to be make. So hopefully by looking at these examples, you have a better understanding about how uh, exponential functions can be used in our everyday life, uh, a lot of applications dealing with money. So see you for our next unit, which will be Unit 3. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?